Welcome into another edition of the Wolverine.com podcast here on the Wolverine.com. It's not just Thanksgiving week. It's not just feast week. It's Michigan, Ohio State week. The game is here. We've all been waiting all year for it. I'm here with former Michigan Wolverine, Ryan Van Bergen. We'll get into the game. We'll talk to it or we'll talk about it here soon. But first, I want to talk about our friends over at Manscaped. Holidays came early for the folks over at Manscaped, the leading men's hygiene brand. Manscaped just lost, launched new products, including their all-new ultra-premium body wash and a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. It's time to give yourself or someone who needs it the gift of beautiful skin, hair, and balls this holiday season. Go to manscaped.com and use the promo code 20 go Blue for 20% off plus free shipping. Uh, untrimmed pubes are the thing of the past, fellas. It's, it's possible... You have Santa's beard in your pants. I love these reads. It's time to leave your significant other some cookies and milk at the bottom of your chimney. I'm not talking about the man's. I'm talking about the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. Um, yeah, it's the 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 product is what it is, folks. You don't want to nick anything down there. You don't want to uh, go to your holiday parties and feel uncomfortable because you had a mishap uh, with your your trimming uh, materials. So inside the Performance Package 4, uh, 4.0. You'll find the lawnmower 4.0. This electric trimmer has proprietary advanced skin safe technology to reduce cuts on your nuts. I see what they did there. It's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. It's like a gift to your partner with less mess. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver, an anti chafing ball deodorant, moisturizer, and toner. It's time to keep your North Pole feeling and smelling fresh. Wow, we love the puns here, folks. Here, the hygiene bundle will also come with a pair of Manscaped anti-chafing boxers that'll keep your junk feeling fresh all day. The perfect package for your perfect package. Manscaped is going beyond the groin with their new Ultra Premium Body Wash. Like I said before, it's infused with aloe and sea salt to keep your skin feeling clean, nice, and moisturized. They also just launched their two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, which has key ingredients with benefits that include hydrating, nourishing, conditioning the scalp, and strengthening your hair at the same time. So use the holiday season to load up on your Manscaped products. Get yourself, your dad, your brother, your friends, whatever it is, the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. That's 20% off and free shipping with the promo code 20 go Blue at manscaped.com. Every guy out there needs to add this to their collection. So go out there, use the promo code 20 go Blue, 20% off, free shipping, manscaped.com. We appreciate our friends over there. Clean up your nuts and make Santa proud this year. With all of that being said, Ryan... Now it's time to talk about the thing that we're actually here for, which is Michigan-Ohio State, the game. Uh, we talked to you about your message ahead of the game. Uh, we won't bring back the audio, but you told players to skip class. Uh, we didn't tell Mark Schlissel. It's fine. Um, but we talked to you about your message ahead of the game. Take us through now what players are going through Friday and leading up to kickoff, because it's almost here. A lot of people don't know what the Friday itinerary is like, but you start game mode around noon on Friday. You go down to the building. Uh, you normally meet as a team, talk about uh, the demeanor and how you want to approach this weekend and what this weekend entails. I'd love to be a fly on the wall and hear what the speech was from Jim Harbaugh this week. Then you go down, you're in your jumpsuits, you do a little walkthrough, uh, some of the things that you like. Also get some looks at some of the things that they like, their, their biggest tendencies. After the walkthrough, you go to another meeting, uh, talk about some of the things you maybe missed on film throughout the week of practice, <clears throat> some of the things you maybe did well on film that you want to execute on game day. And then you might get a little meal in you and you head to what was the campus and I believe it's now called The Graduate. And you got dinner, movie night, and then you watch the highlight tape before you go to bed. That was my favorite thing is you always watch the highlight tape before you go to bed. And um, normally when I was there, coaches would come check on you. Uh, Coach Hoke would bring you a uh, chocolate chip cookie. I know it's not pregame, like, <laughs> best nutrition, but just what, being honest, it's what happened. He'd come in with a cookie and he's, you know, you're going to dream about making some plays for Michigan tomorrow. And uh, if you slept, then that's what you dream about. And um, then you wake up Saturday and it's all business, especially because it's always a noon game. So wake up's 5.30 and, you know, you're out of the hotel by 10, bunch of stuff in between there. But um, it gets real. As soon as you get onto the concrete steps at Schembechler Hall, noon on Friday, they are already in game mode, guaranteed. All right. Well, Ryan, let's talk to Michi Let's talk about Michigan's road to this point. 10-1, and one, number five ranked team in the college football playoff rankings. We know where things started. We know what they came off of last offseason and last season, all the changes that had to be made. And 
Now they've played 11 football games, and they've won all but one of them. So how do you feel about the path here and the trajectory of where this thing has gone? I think as a fan base, and I include myself in this group, we need to kind of take a step back and be appreciative for the turnaround that has occurred this year. I think that um, there's so many people that have already brought up the message of if Harbaugh loses this one, you know, this is a stain, you know, do you get rid of him? And if you'd have told me at the beginning of the season, if we lost to Michigan State, not that there are only, are only two losses, but we lose to Michigan State and we lose to Ohio State this year, the odds of Harbaugh coming back aren't great. Uh, but now that the season has transpired the way that it has, and we've seen the team play the way that we have, I, I honestly think it's been a tremendous turnaround for Harbaugh. I think bringing in Mike Hart and you know, McDonald and uh, our quarterback coach, Weiss, and some of the other guys that he brought in, the new blood that he brought in in the contract negotiations um, that he went between him and, and the athletic director in the offseason, all that could have led to you know, either more of the same or even a downturn in what this season has been. To get to 10-1 and one on this season, playing the road schedule that we've had to play, I think is just tremendous. And uh, this team is definitely on the up and up. It's the biggest thing. I think obviously we want to finish this season up, but I think one of the biggest things is can we continue and maintain and continue to build on this? Or are we going to have another regression next year? Cause I think that'd be the biggest knock is can we maintain this high level of playing football, but just be appreciative. I uh, saw your tweet yesterday of Nick Saban go off King and uh, talking about how we should just be appreciative of these guys that represent our university and work their freaking asses off uh, to be in this position. And, and uh, super proud of this team, uh, the leadership of this team. I'm always about leadership. I think that's one of the biggest elements that you need on a team, regardless of your X's and O's. And just super thankful to have gotten to this point and to be in contention and potentially playing. I mean, this is a Big Ten championship game tomorrow. It's it's the first half of it. And who thought we would be there at the beginning of the season? Not me. I'd say not 90% of people. So um, let's just be thankful this is where we're at. Yeah, it's all about giving thanks this week, of course. And again, I know we've talked about this before, Ryan, where in most years the the expectation is that this is what's on the line in this game. But to be frank, it hasn't been like that the last few years, and, and last year's game didn't happen. So that's why I think a lot of people are, are really fired up and really appreciative that the turnaround has gone the way it has. Let's let's move to the Buckeyes, though, now. Um, I think it's pretty apparent and, and pretty well assumed, and you can ask Brent Venables down at Clemson last year, he had to deal with it in the playoff. Even the most elite of defenses are going to have problems shutting this Ohio State offense down. Uh, C.J. Stroud, you know, I think probably the front runner for the Heisman right now. I, I'm, I have to check on what the odds are there, but he set himself up well for that. They have three super talented wide receivers. They can run the ball when they want to. They've got a big physical offensive line. We like we said, we know that Michigan. You feel like they have guys that can make plays, but we know they're not going to be able to completely shut them down. But what are areas that you see Michigan potentially having an advantage in and how it can help its its cause on Saturday? Well, the biggest advantage is going to be Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo on the edges. They're the two most talented pass rushers in the Big Ten. They stand uh, out uh, kind of on a platform of their own this season. And, you know, who knows what the other one would have done had they been on separate teams and had all the opportunities and not be competing against each other for sacks. Um, But those guys are going to be a big difference maker in this game if they can find a way to impact the game. Uh, I think that that's where we – when you play Ohio State, they've got such elite talent that it, across the board, it's tough to find places where you have an obvious advantage. And I think that's an obvious advantage in our favor and something that will change the game if they're able to get to the quarterback, sacks, maybe potentially create a fumble. Those guys are going to be great um, and be a big factor in what happens in this game. Um, other places that I like, I don't know. I mean, Ohio State. Uh, I hate giving them compliments. Trust me. I wouldn't give them to them if they weren't warranted, but this is maybe one of the best passing attack offenses that you've seen, you know, in the last five, 10 years, definitely one of the best Ohio state has had. And that's saying a lot because they've been so dominant uh, in their passing game. But um, you know, I, I would say that we've got some guys that I think are ready to, get a spotlight shined on them for shutting some of their guys down. I think uh, DJ Turner's right there. If he can have a game against some of these receivers, all of a sudden he's now boosted up. This is a platform. If you're in this Michigan secondary and all eyes are on this game and you can come and have a big showing, all of a sudden your draft stock just went up. You didn't go up a round. You went up two rounds, three rounds, and, um, you know, and you're now in the senior bowl, stuff like that. Obviously these guys are young, but still that's the kind of case you can make is that these guys – 
have an opportunity to show up on a national spotlight and shut down the most potent receiving core that is in college football right now. So um, I like our edge rushers. Honestly, I mean, this is a team that if you can hold them to less than five touchdowns, five or less touchdowns, it's a good game. It's so rare that you would say that, but that's what this game is. So um, I'm not saying I don't like matchups that we have anywhere else, but I know as a winning matchup, Aiden Hutchinson, David Ajabo, you guys got to win for us tomorrow. Yeah, that's something that I've said in a couple of a couple hits and a couple things on our site this week is that I feel like if you can keep a team like this, if you can keep Ohio State somewhere in the low to mid 30s, you're going to have your it's going to be a game in the fourth quarter, but it's that one extra score somewhere uh, that you want to see if you can slow them down. But let's talk about offense now. You have to score points in a game like in a game like this. I feel like we've been talking about it for weeks. Touchdowns instead of field goals. That's going to be a key on Saturday. What do you see as some keys to putting drives together and you know, I assume Michigan's going to want to play a little bit of clock uh, clock and ball control with it, but they're going to have to be explosive and, and dial some things up too, right? Absolutely. They're going to have to show great balance. Gaddis is going to have to bring all his tools to the press box with him and be creative and also stick to our identity, which is a tough catch-22 in order to, to – be effective against them. I think we're going to have to balance ourselves out on first downs. We're not going to be able to come out and go 80% run on first down and expect to have second and five, second and fours. We're going to have to get creative. doesn't mean we have to push the ball downfield, but we have to get it to the edges and then pound Haskins in the middle. Maybe throw some quick game uh, if we can find it, depending on if they're playing off coverage, because I'm anticipating they're going to load the box. So if we can get just some quick game on first and 10 where we get a slant that's now second and five, that's a huge win. That's a huge, might not look like it, but that's a huge win on first down. Winning on first down is going to be huge, so that way we can have the arsenal of play calling in our belt for second and third down. If we go first down run play every drive and we end up getting stuffed for second and nine, that's not going to bode well for us, for, for us moving forward. Um, you know, I do think that our running game is the, t- the toughest that they're going to have faced. I was disappointed that Michigan State, it seemed like Kenneth Walker was not 100%. Obviously, he wasn't 100%. He didn't play, I think he had six carries when they played him. So I thought that was going to be a nice uh, benchmark uh, of what kind of rushing defense they had, uh, especially right before they played us. But we didn't get that bench or that measuring stick. So um, I think we can run the ball on them, but it can't be – obvious and it can't be um so predictable because if it is those guys are good enough they're going to make plays and make plays in the backfield and get us off the field i also think that we got guys that can make plays on the edge we have hungry receivers andre anthony comes to mind i think andre anthony kid from michigan understands this game that's something that you can't really put a a valuation on how important it is to have guys playing in this game that are from the Midwest because no nothing against guys from Texas and California and Florida, but you don't get it all the way. You just don't. So I think Andre Anthony, you throw him some jump balls, he's going to go out and try and win those things for you. He's going against great secondary, so he might not get it, but I think that uh, him and some of the other receivers are going to have to show up for us. And I honestly like our matchup with the tight ends. I've talked about him a lot. I think Eric all getting him involved, early and often Schumacher getting him involved early and often play action where linebackers can't just flow to Hassan Haskins or Corum or Edwards, whoever's running the ball for us, but make those linebackers have to slow up just a little bit because if you commit to the run, we're going to hurt you. We haven't done that a lot, but we need to do that in this game in order to give Haskins Corum some room and have some, uh, have some flow and some sync to our offense because we need long sustained drives in order to win this game. Yeah, offensive line is going to have to play the game of its life, too. I mean, the, the back seven of Ohio State's defense, I think there are a lot of similar questions to what people have had about Michigan's defense throughout the year. But uh, that that front is long, they're athletic, and they're physical. So Michigan's offensive line, namely its tackles, they're going to have to come to play as well. So uh, ideally, I mean, that's why we're here, right? Ideally, you want to win the game. But what are some baseline things that you need to see out of this team on Saturday? No turnovers. We can't give them an extra possession. I mean, we've not been great at creating turnovers on the defensive side, which has been one of my, you know, one of my few criticisms of the McDonald defense that we've seen so far to this point. But one of the things we've done so well and why we're in the position that we're in is because we do such a great job taking care of the ball. And if for some reason we don't take care of the ball in this game, we won't even be close. It'll be a Michigan State style win for for Ohio State. So we've got to take care of the football because if we have – a turnover, two plus turnovers, I, we can probably turn it off. We're not going to come back and win this game. Um, the other thing I would say is keeping guys in front of us, the big play. Ohio State lives off the big play. They don't want to score from 50, or from the red zone, to be honest with you. I'd almost 
talk about strategically letting them come down to us. Come on down. Let's shrink the field. Let's make the square footage smaller. So Alave and Smith and Jibwa and Wilson, the speed doesn't hurt us as much. We're only covering, I don't know what the numbers are, 900 square feet as opposed to 2,000 square feet. Easier. You know what I mean? It's just mathematically, there's less for them to do and less for them to do with their speed and space. So we have to keep them in front of us. As a fan, uh, watching this game, you've got to kind of sit back in your seat. And uh, when they have the ball on their side of the field or at the 50 midfield, don't be surprised to see Travion Henderson break free for an 8, 12, 15-yard run, and we rally and make a tackle. I'll be totally fine with that. I, I say walk them down to the red zone, and then let's try and make them kick field goals. These guys are that good offensively and that dangerous offensively uh, that we should – be cautious of letting them get behind us because if Ohio State gets a big play, uh, they're going to be up with 35 points in the first half. That's another thing is they're such a fast starting team. So no turnovers and limiting or minimizing any big plays from Ohio State. And we should be there, at least in striking distance at the end of the game, which is all I'm looking for. Yeah, and if you can make them kick field goals, the special teams units have been have been strong all year. Maybe you get your hand on one or you affect the kicker, you do something like that. So you're totally right on that. Um, I don't know if there's all that much more to say on this game than that. I mean, are there any other keys to this game or matchups you'll be looking at? Um, certainly think feels like Michigan needs to be the team that gets off to the faster start. Yeah, I need to get off to the faster start. We need to make sure we're checking numbers. It sounds elementary a little bit, but we need to make sure we're checking numbers in the box. McNamara needs to have the keys to change plays. I feel like we've had that kind of discussion wondering what is exactly, what freedoms does he have in this offense uh, to make play checks and stuff like that. We're on the 12th game of the season. He's not a, you know, not an amateur or rookie. This guy's been, you know, this is his, what, 14th start, something like that. And he's played in this game before, so he should know what to do. You get up on first and 10, you've got a dive called the Haskins, and they have eight, nine in the box, and you've got, you know, just guys playing off. You throw the bubble, check to the bubble, check to the slant. You know, you're third and one, and we're lined up with a power eye, and they have nine guys to the right of our center. Check the play. Don't run into that teeth of that because you're not going to win. I feel like that's going to be essential. He's going to need to come to the line and identify – a blitz, an overload, a misalignment by them, and point it out and get us in the right play to take advantage of it. If he can do that in a couple different instances and keep us on the field and extend some possessions, that I think is going to be one of the biggest keys is limiting possessions for Ohio State, which means we need to possess the ball. So I feel like that's kind of the element of our offense in McNamara. You hear the coaches say McNamara is the, the winner. He's a leader. He's a gritty guy. All these different things that I mean, all lovable qualities, but he also needs to be able to come in and, and identify and get us into good situations. And I feel like either one, we don't give him that freedom all the time, or two, he's not comfortable doing that all the time. But it's your show, man. Go out there. You only get so many opportunities as a starting quarterback for Michigan to play against Ohio State at home. Go out there and run this thing and, and make sure that we're in situations that are setting us up for success against a really good team. Yeah, so often in this game, too, there are these X-factor performances that come out of ab you know, absolutely nowhere. And, and typically speaking, it's been the Buckeyes that have had a guy come out of the shadows to have a, a game-defining or a game-breaking performance. Give me a couple guys on Michigan you think might be candidates for that. Rod Moore, I'm calling my freshman in the secondary because – Ryan Day definitely has three circles around number 19 on their on their chalkboard. If this is a true freshman that they're going to start against us, and honestly, how dare they? You know, this this is we're going to take advantage of this guy, and they're going to try and find a way to find each receiver to get isolated on him. And I think he's going to have to come down with some. Uh, come up, excuse me, with some big plays. And defensively, we all know the secondary is what's going to get tested. And we all know that, you know, Hutchinson, Ajabo are names that we should expect to have big games. But someone you don't expect, I'm saying Rod Moore. I'm thinking he's going to do something special. He's just been getting better every week. And this could be the week that he breaks out. Offensively, I think, you know, it's one of the receivers. I don't know which one it's going to be, but we need someone that can win one-on-one -on -one and get us to, to get the chains moved. We're in at third and whatever, you know, third and longer, or we're in the red zone and we need, we need to not kick field goals like we've discussed. I think it's going to be Andrell Anthony. Um, I think Sandra still, he's really starting to come on strong and he's a tough guy to, to stay glued to, but I'm going to go with Andrell Anthony on offense. I think he's going to get at least one red zone, if not two red zone touchdown grabs, and they're just going to throw it up for him. He's going to go get it. The bold predictions are out. I love it. Um, well, we put it off long enough. It's time to put up or shut up uh, from our perspective. Ryan, give me a score prediction. Uh, I think you just gave us a breakout performance, but 
a score prediction and someone who you think will be the player of the game. Uh, I'm going to go Michigan 41, 38. Um, do I think it's the highest percentage chance that it's going to happen? No, but my heart believes that these guys can do this and I can't pick against them when I feel like there's uh there's an, a, a good enough chance that they can get this done. So I'm going to say 41, 38, Michigan breakout performance. I don't want to steal your guy, but I think it's got to be McNamara. If we're going to win this game, McNamara has to have an incredible stat line that at least competes with CJ Stroud. You know, if CJ Stroud goes 38 for 42 with six touchdowns, we lost this game, you know, and conversely, if McNamara doesn't have two to maybe three touchdowns to his name, we don't win this game either. You know, we need to score five touchdowns to win this game, period. And McNamara has got to come up with at least three of them. So um, he's got to be the guy. I want him to be the guy, but he has to be the guy in order for us to win this game. Ooh, I feel like the bad guy now if I make the, the, the pick the other way. But I, I did pick Ohio State in our staff predictions. Uh, it, it's one of those games where I just I just think there's too much firepower there. And Michigan is going to need to get one stop somewhere. And Ohio State's going to have to play make one play somewhere. And – you know, in the past, they've shown more of an aptitude to do that. Um, with that being said, I mean, this we've talked about this before, too. Like, legacies are storyline all week. Legacies are on the line. Uh, what you do in this game is how you remember. I think Aiden Hutchinson will be a man possessed in this game. So I'm going to go a couple sacks for him, maybe a forced fumble as well. So those are my two predictions. I'll keep them quieter and shorter because you had the fun one that everyone likes more. So, um all right, Ryan, I put you on the spot Sunday with a message for the team ahead of the week. I'm going to put you in the locker room again. It's Saturday. The fans are in the stadium. You guys go back to the locker room. There's one final um, one final powwow amongst the teammates. What's, what's the message? You're standing up. You're giving the fire and brimstone speech. Let's hear it. <laughs> You're talking to the wrong guy. I, I usually was so charged up. I knew not to say anything at this moment because I'm just ready to lose it. Uh I mean, if I'm this guy, I'm standing up and I'm saying something to the effect of this is everything. There's nothing there's not, nothing beyond this 60 minutes of football that we're about to play. And this 60 minutes of football is going to define not only this season, but if you're Aiden Hutchinson and some of these seniors, your entire career here at Michigan. I felt the same pressure in my senior year going from a three and nine team that had never beat Ohio State to coming to the big house and winning 40 to 34. So you guys have everything in front of you and every opportunity. Don't let any play beat you more than once. You're going to make mistakes. They're going to score touchdowns. All those things are going to happen, but you just play your freaking asses off and, and you be there in the fourth quarter and we'll have an opportunity to win this game. But all 11 guys on every play, everybody on the sidelines, everybody tuned all the way in. There is no 99%, 100%, 100% of the time. And let's see where this thing shakes out. Sounds like a good message to me. All right, that's going to do it for us. Michigan, Ohio State. Michigan is an eight-point underdog. Game kicks off at 12 p.m. on Fox, so get ready for a four-hour broadcast. Um, Ryan, thank you for joining us. Uh, people who have, are watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast, thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, you can follow us wherever you get your shows, Apple, Google, Spotify. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, we're on the On3 network now. I've been hammering that home for weeks guys you can join us for a year for one dollar right now there's not a black friday deal on the entire internet that is better than what we're offering you there so insider info vibrant message board community um, expert analysis all that type of stuff it's all there it's one dollar for a year guys you cannot beat that deal so the link to that is also in the description below uh for ryan van bergen i'm anthony broom this has been the wolverine.com podcast next time we talk there will be some finality to all this, so we'll see where, what happens. But thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next time.